introduction to exercise 9D on using arrays for two-step experiments, page 586. Today's question we're answering, if you don't need to write down, is what is the difference between replacement and without replacement? This is a very key thing in probability. We're making a lot of assumptions when we make, well, when we do probability calculations. For example, the very basic probability formula that we use is assuming equally likely outcomes. So for example, flipping a coin, it's 50-50 or one out of two, because if I flip a heads, it's one heads possibility out of a total of a heads and a tails. But that doesn't always work. For example, this is a legitimate story. Uh, during lockdown, when you guys were in uh, at home studying and I was at schools preparing lessons, in between, you know, when there was recess, etc., I would need a break and I get a little bit bored. So I go to the, uh, the, the basketball courts, sorry, this hard courts right there, and I try to learn my three pointers. Legitimately, I spent time trying to learn my three pointers. Now, this is going to be the part that surprises you. I'm not very good at basketball, right? But I still took my shots and I'd say once every 15, maybe, three pointer shots I got in anyway. Not very good, but the, but the shot is there. And so the argument then becomes, if I, the outcomes are either I get it in or I don't get it in, isn't it 50% chance one out of two that I get the three pointer? No, it's not. So we make a lot of assumptions when we do calculations of probability. This one we're focusing on is about replacement or without replacement. For example, if you're playing Scrabble, there's a set number of letters for each one, right? It doesn't make sense if you're playing Scrabble and there are just as many Q's as there are E's. So every time you take a letter out of the Scrabble bag, right, you're changing the probability. Every time you take something out, you change the probability. Makes sense. A lot of the calculations we've done so far are with replacement, which means that when you take a letter out of the bag, you put it back in. And then you do the calculation again. You take a letter out, you put it back in, you keep going. But how does that change if we don't replace the letters? This right here, and I'm hoping you've written down this section, an array or table is often used to list the sample space for the experiments with two sets. I'm just going to reconnect because by the way, uh, is often used to list sample space for experiments with two steps. Okay, so again, we can go the first step, second step. The example I've got here: two letters are chosen from the word cat. Now, it's a very basic example, but there are only three letters. Okay, so what we've done is just done the first example or the first draw, first letter chosen in this column, and then the second letter in the rows. Okay, so for example, you could theoretically get CC, because you draw a C, and you put it back, and you draw another C, that works. You could get, for example, AC, that makes sense. You can take it out and put it back in. There are nine different outcomes. Three letters, twice, nine different outcomes. And it makes sense, because there are three options, and the second time around, there are three options again. So three times three is nine. When there's no replacement, is it possible to get a C and then a C again? No, you can't. You also can't get an A and A, and you can't get a T and a T. So the probability changes in itself. Now instead of nine outcomes, there's only six outcomes. Okay, and we just use a cross to show that it's not possible. So that's the difference between with and without replacement. In most things in life, it'll be without replacement. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to draw out a table or an array so that we can represent the scenario. In this case, we've got two identical counters that have red and blue side. Again, we are assuming they're exactly the same likelihood. We're assuming they're exactly the same likelihood. We're going to draw a table to list sample space. Okay? So, because they're tossed, right? In this case, you can get a red and a red, can't you? So, let's say we're going to draw out the table. I'm going to first make it very clear which side I'm answering first. I'm going to do first, and then I'm going to do red and blue. And the second... And I'm going to do red and blue here as well. It's only a two by two grid, which means there's only four outcomes. I know that because it's red and a blue. So this one here, I'm going to write as red, red, just using brackets to show it's red and then a red. This one would be a blue 
and a red, a red and a blue, and a blue and a blue. Please note they should all be different. I know it looks the same. Apologies for the zoom out. I know it looks the same, right? But it should be blue, red, and red, blue. They should be different, depending on whichever one you label it as first and then the second. Because, and again, this is the way of thinking about it, a lot of students will think the only options are red, red, a blue and a blue, and a red and a blue. So therefore, it's at three outcomes, which is wrong. So it should be four outcomes. Okay, now it says find the probability of obtaining a blue and a blue. If you had done this incorrectly and thought that these were the same without drawing this up, you just thought the blue and the red and the red and the blue were the same, you would say, well, blue, blue, it's one out of three outcomes, therefore one out of three, done, one third, which would be wrong. Because there are four outcomes, not three. So the probability of BB, oops, BB, is equal to one out of four, because it's one out of the four outcomes. It says find the probability of one red side. So what I'm gonna do is just shorthand it. The probability of one R, right, is, and I'm looking for, it says one red side, not at least one red side, just says one red side, which is one, two options, and a total of four, two over four, which equals to one half. Okay, so we're making it very clear what are the outcomes and then what are the outcomes I want. Okay? To go with the example from prior, the only if, if the question said, right, if the question said a coin is tossed and a dice is rolled, then there's two different options. And depending on whichever way you look at it, you're going to have to fill in your table. Okay? But the key point I want you to get away from this is how do we draw one of these tables up? And what is the difference between with and without replacement? Inherently, the probability will change. So make sure you're identifying what the question is asking. If the question says, for example, that you're taking letters out of a Scrabble bag, make sure you identify whether it says it's putting it back or not. Because if it's not putting it back, the probability will change and you can't repeat. Any questions? Okay. Okay.